Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. After months of will he or won't he, tonight former President Donald Trump endorsing Tudor Dixon for governor. Trump's endorsement comes just days before voters head to the polls for the August 2nd primary. It also comes after several candidates in the race were basically pleading uh, with Trump to avoid endorsing anyone in their field of five. Mara McDonald live downtown tonight. Uh, Mara, for starters, most Republican primary voters will be voting at the polls Tuesday rather than absentee, and that's pretty critical to this moment. It is, Devin, and it's a total reversal. You know, I'm old enough to remember when the Michigan GOP absolutely owned the absentee ballots. They had a wonderful program to go out and recruit absentee ballots for the GOP cause. Well, that is no longer the case. Our polling shows that the majority of these voters intend on voting in person on Tuesday, which means the timing of this endorsement, it's everything. The email blast from former President Trump came out just after 8 o'clock, throwing his full support behind Tudor Dixon for governor. And to Republican primary voters, that endorsement carries weight. For those who were undecided in the race, 63% said it would be important to them. 31% said it would be very important. So these numbers are going to shift. This endorsement is hugely important to this race. Other candidates in the race had urged Trump not to endorse, but instead he backed Dixon, who herself has garnered the support of GOP mega donors, the DeVos family. Even my opponents on the stage would say I'm the best person to win this election because they're attacking me as well. Candidates Ryan Kelly and Garrett Saldano have been highly critical of DeVos support for Dixon and used the term establishment Republican as a pejorative. As Zuba astutely points out, Trump just did the Michigan GOP a pretty big favor. Here's why. Donald Trump chose to actually unite the Michigan Republican Party this time. He, he brought together the, the different factions of the party behind Tudor Dixon, which gives them a fighting chance in, in November now. Back here live, we are about to see what the strength of a Trump endorsement is going to do in a Michigan GOP primary. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. I'm an 11th hour turn, but a fascinating one. All right, Mara. Now, breaking news just in from Detroit's west side, where a number of people have been shot. Megan Woods is live at the scene on Stopel, just west of Livernoy. Megan, what have you learned so far? Well, right now, three blocks of Stopel Avenue are closed off. Uh, that's between McNichols and Thatcher. Right now, we're on Thatcher, and you can see the flashing lights behind me and investigators going door to door. And you can also see in the middle of the street, if you look closely, glass on the ground, and that looks to be from some sort of car. Take a look at this video we were able to get earlier from the scene. Police are saying a black truck with two people inside were parked on Stopel, another person was walking down the street. Shots were fired at that truck, and police say the person in the passenger seat was killed. Two others were also shot. All three were males. There is this dark green Durango on scene, but it's still unclear how that is involved. Now back out here live, if you're just joining us again, we're on Stopel Avenue. Three blocks are blocked or closed off. That's from Six Mile McNichols to Thatcher, where we are right now. And police are saying this scene is still unfolding and details are very limited right now. We'll have updates on clickondetroit.com. Live in Detroit, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. And thank you. New tonight, a man is in critical condition after a gunman shoots him in the face in Sterling Heights. Take a look. This is video of the scene at Aqua Lane near Van Dyke Avenue. Police say they got a call about a domestic incident, and when officers got there, they found a 34-year-old man with a gunshot wound to the face. A 20-year-old suspect then took off toward the Maple Grove apartment complex and was found near a dumpster. Police say he then turned, it, turned the gun on himself and took his own life. A major reward being offered for information in the Detroit house fire that caused the building to collapse, trapping a firefighter. Crews scrambled to save a 20-year veteran of the department from the rubble at this vacant home on Hollywood on the city's east side. Investigators believe the fire suspicious in nature. The uh, AFT and the uh, Detroit Fire Department, now ATF, I'm sorry, the Detroit Fire Department now teaming up to offer a, a $25,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of those responsible. We've posted a link on how to leave a tip at clickondetroit.com.
Tonight, Russia is requesting to add more names to a proposed prisoner swap for WNBA star Brittany Griner and Novi native Paul Whelan. The Biden administration is attempting to bring the pair home in exchange for Victor Bout. He's a convicted Russian arms trafficker. Here we are asking for, you know, a basketball player back and, and somebody we know to be innocent and on the other side is an arms dealer. And we see this all over the world. And you worry about two things. One, you know, somebody who may have committed a misdemeanor is not the same as a global notorious arms dealer. Well, Russia is now asking for former Soviet Colonel Vadim Kraskov to the swap. Right now, he's serving life in prison in Germany for murder. A German source says U.S. officials did make quiet inquiries about the proposition, but others suggest the U.S. does not view it as a legitimate counteroffer. They believe Russia is just trying to buy time until Greiner's trial is over. A dry, mostly sunny end of the work week today. Yeah, Brett's here with uh, even more sunshine for the weekend. Hi, Brett. Lots of it, so enjoy it. Not only that, but the humidity is going to be down, so it's going to feel really nice both days this weekend. Not too bad today, low to mid 80s for highs, but with the dry air in place, you can see how some numbers outside of the metro zone have really cooled down. How about 62 right now? in Ann Arbor is likely going to be a good spread in numbers as you wake up first thing tomorrow morning. I think a lot of us will be in the 50s, if not some spots in the low 60s, climbing into the mid 80s. So a touch better than what we did today. More of the same for Sunday, but even that day is going to do a touch hotter as well. So the weekend looking really nice. Two thumbs up. But next week, the chance for showers and thunderstorms returns following that. We're talking 90s for temps with heat index values near triple digits. We'll break it down for you in just a bit. OK, Brett, thank you. The hike to the state's minimum wage will not take effect until next year. Last week, a court of claims judge overturned the action Republican lawmakers took in 2018 to keep $12 an hour minimum wage and more paid sick leave off the ballot. Well, today, the judge delayed initiatives from taking effect immediately. Under the judge's order, the $12 minimum wage hike would now take effect February 19th of next year. President Biden may be traveling to Saginaw next Tuesday. The Detroit News reporting it's for an event tied to the CHIPS Act legislation. The massive package aims to boost domestic production of semiconductor chips and keeping the U.S. competitive with China. The House passed the CHIPS Act on Thursday on its way now to the president's desk. We'll keep an eye on the president's travel plans for next week. If you missed the top of the newscast tonight, we've got the uh, winning numbers to tonight's $1.2 billion Mega Millions jackpot. Here are those numbers. 13, 36, 45, 57, 67, and the Mega Ball is 14. The Mega Plier is 2. All right, still ahead. A Macomb County man is charged with a hate crime. What he's accused of doing when he saw a black man standing across the street from his home. And a dad rushes to the court during a boys' basketball game. What happened next landed him in the hospital. But first, a gunman opens fire at random at cars along Telegraph. Disturbing video has neighbors sounding the alarm. We'll have a closer look next.